Just a little bit of reading. Let's go to gate number 28 of Romans 8. Romans 8. Let's take it to 28 gate. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Somebody look up and say, I love you, Lord. Some of y'all pitiful. I said, look up and say, I love you, Lord. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. But over whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. We've come to this moment where we want to hear from you. We've danced, we've celebrated life. We've been encouraged through exaltation and uplifted through exaltation. From praise and worship to leadership speaking over our life. Now we come to the moment, God, where you bring a culmination of everything that has transpired since we've been in your presence. Father, we ask that you get in our business, get into our bills, get into our life, get into our health. Speak to us. Leave no stone unturned. Touch every heart, touch every mind, every circumstance. Everyone under the sound of the voice that your word be made flesh and dwell amongst us even now. Let the heavens drop the earth quiet righteousness let your kingdom come, your glory be revealed. We'll give you all the glory and honor. Let the people say amen. That was pitiful. I said let the people say amen. Some of y'all lazy. I said let the people say amen. You may be seated. I want to talk from the subject that God has deemed this message verses 28 to 39 and I want to tie all these together with a subject in the form of a question that God has for us as a church. Yes. Can I trust you? Come on. Uh, Come on. 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has a question for us. Some of y'all ain't talking. I mean what I'm saying. I said, look at somebody and say, neighbor. God has a question for us. Can I trust you? This encompasses everyone from the pulpit to the door. From the right to the left. Diagonal and everything in the center. Can I trust you? Puedo confiar en ti. Can I trust you? It is difficult in the opening of this, but we'll get through it as a church. I want to start by trying to help you to understand that there is a difference between loyalty and trust. A difference between loyalty and trust. Yeah. I don't want to talk to you as an individual. I want to talk to you as a church. Because many of you separate yourself from everybody else. And that your relationship is separate from the church. But the truth is... There is no one person in here who meets the mark by themselves. I knew it would get tired. I said it was going to get rough before we got there, but I'm not the one talking no way. It is important that we understand as a body of believers that there is a difference between loyalty and trust. Loyalty is simply put in its definition support. That's pretty much summing it up. You support. If I'm loyal, I support you in wherever you are doing whatever you're doing at whatever. I, I'm just supporting. I'm not leading. I'm supporting. You need somebody to talk to? I'm there. You need somebody to run with you? I'm there. You need somebody to remind you? I'm there. That's loyalty. But trust is something that is shared. I thought I had a church, not people separated and isolated. Trust is something that is shared. And whenever we talk about trust broken, it simply means that an individual is not able to get through a point that is broken. But as a church, we often forget we are not our own. I thought I had a church I could talk to. And if you cannot get past wherever you find a broken trust, you're simply saying that your problem is bigger than the God. So I have to be the one, the bearer of bad news, the villain and the hero, I pray at some point, to try and bring you back to the place where you understand that what you find broken, God does it. That at some point, even though loyalty to kingdom is good, it's not enough to get the job done as a church. It, it is here now that we really begin to understand what it is God wants from us when we recognize uh, looking from verses 28 all the way to the closing of 39 that Paul is trying to get the Roman people to understand as a group of believers that it is impossible for you to please God by yourself. Amen. 
It is impossible for you to praise God by yourself, to worship by yourself. Can you do it? Yes. But is it enough for God? The answer is no. I, I want to find out, is there anybody in here who's really wondering why the church is going through such problems with division of people set apart amongst themselves. If you are wondering, I've come to give you an answer, it's simply because some are being loyal and have forgotten that God doesn't want loyalty, he wants a trustee. He wants somebody that is trustworthy. I wish I had a church I could preach to instead of people that would just look. I want to find people that understand in the body of Christ that God is no longer looking for people who just come because that's where I'm supposed to be. But I'm here to operate where I'm supposed to be. It's not enough to hold a title. It's not enough to hold a seat. But you ain't doing nothing with the title or a seat because something in you has been broken. Uh, you sang that song, I said, Lord, you really want me to go in and preach really hard. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we act like we gon' see him because I worked it out for myself. You can't work nothing out by yourself. The Bible says, work out your own soul salvation. Where you gonna work it out by yourself? You got to work it out amongst other believers because you your life is supposed to be a written testimony of the power of God to the rest of the body. It's just me, myself, and I. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you that you by yourself is not enough to make God happy until you are able to hook up and connect with all of your brothers and sisters. You have not lifted the name of God high enough. How do we, how do we get here? Because we have become so individualized. We have become such islands that we no longer recognize that we need one another and not the one another of our own independent self, but the one another where Jesus is because you got something in you I need to hear to keep me going. I got something you need to hear to keep you going. You got some power in you to help me get over and I've got some power in me to help you get over. But if you keep what you got to yourself. You ain't doing yourself no good because God didn't give it to you for you. He gave it. Oh, but you want to just stay loyal. Lord, I got to get out of here already. They're trying to drive me out, Jesus. I, I, I don't want loyalty. I want something I can trust. I want somebody I can trust. And what God says here through Paul is, I gave up the best and when I gave the best what I gave, gave its best and you want to act like you can keep it to yourself well that's my opinion that's how I feel and that's the way that baby you're wrong you better learn that somebody got to pull your mind back down because you have become personalized and individualized and now you're looking through the wrong sights uh, anything that can separate you as a church you better know it's of the devil I don't care what it is who it is how it is when it is you better know it is of the devil and until you get past you you don't understand pastor you can't see what it is pastor no no I can see it I promise you I can see it but the issue is not the church what God wants the church to do is go through changes I wish I had somebody I can talk to it's called a body for a reason the body has got to grow at some point and some of you want to stay where you are but you can't because if you're going to stay in the church you 
got to go. I got to find somebody I can talk to. Oh, Pastor, pray for me. I'm praying that you grow out of what you got and into where God wants you to be. Oh, Pastor, my mind. I'm praying your mind matures so that you can become more spiritual minded in what you see naturally. And so you're not governed by your emotions and your feelings, but you are governed by the Word of God, which will always bring you to verse number 28. And we know that all things work. God, I wish I had a crazy church, but I know it's coming. Now, look at somebody and tell them you better scream if you ain't never screamed before. Because God is getting ready to let things work. Yes, Work for your good, you still slow. I close mouths don't get fed. I said, tell your neighbor you better holler so we can get what we need. Ah, it's not enough for one person to get a job. It's not enough for one person to be delivered. It's not enough for one person to be set free. Until we all can feel it. Until we all can experience Experience it. Then we haven't graduated as a church. When I'm just in my little corner in my own little chair singing my own little song. Well, we didn't come to church for you to sit there by yourself like you're here. No, no. Get past yourself and recognize that hell don't want you to connect with the church. I didn't say foolishness. I didn't say pettiness. I didn't say stupidity. I said connect with the church Do I have a church that'll talk back to me? I said God wants you to connect with a church That will help you to graduate To the next level Thank you Jesus Yeah, I knew they wouldn't care for old school preaching. But I got to give it like God told me to give it. Because son, somebody somewhere is going to hear this and be ready. Because it's getting ready to happen for a people that's ready. God can't do nothing if it's not working according to your good. I got to find somebody I can talk to. Is there anybody in here that can say, God, I thank you that you didn't let things unravel and come apart while I was acting like a fool while I was going through my changes while I was being petty while I was acting stupid you didn't let everything fall apart you didn't let my life unravel while I was stuck in my own emotions stuck in my own mind and I know it should have been worse when we come to the conclusion uh, that it is not about us but about the church uh, when we recognize now uh, why God chooses trust over loyalty. Uh, I know loyalty will keep you in a routine and habitual, uh, but it does not establish trust. Uh, I wish I had a church I could preach to. Uh, what God wants is somebody uh, he can share himself with. Uh, he said, I sent the firstborn, uh, uh, and I want you to be like the firstborn. I want you to have the image of the firstborn of the son of God Jesus. Look at somebody and tell them I want you to be like Jesus. I know, I know some of y'all scared. You don't want to face the challenge. I said, but find somebody you can encourage and tell them, be like Jesus, be like, be like Jesus. Don't try to be like pastor. Don't try to be like the bishops. Don't try to be like somebody else. I said, but be like Jesus. I wish I had me a real church I could preach to. I said, be like Jesus. Oh, I love the way they sing. Sing like Jesus told you to sing. I want to dance like that. Dance like Jesus. Put it in your feet. Nothing 
neighbor and tell them be like Jesus. Uh, my father used to sing that old school song. Uh, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. How I long to be like him. So meek and lowly, so humble and lowly. How I long to be like I don't know them songs right there. How we used to have another song say, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. I want to walk in the newness of life. So let me be a follower of Christ. I said, look at somebody and tell them, be like Jesus. Find somebody I can talk to. The Bible said, Mark the perfect man. I ain't got nobody that read that Bible. You know why? Because it doesn't matter whether you are male or female. If you try to be like Jesus, you'll never come up short. I got to find a church I can talk to in here. But if you're trying to hook up with somebody that you admire, but don't know the story behind what you admire, you gonna come up short, baby. Oh, I like the way they smile, but you don't know why they smile. Lord, I wish I had a church to push a man with a mic. Look at somebody and tell them, be like Jesus, be like Jesus. It is here now we really begin to understand why God wants us to do what it is Paul says in Romans 8. Him he foreknew, he predestinated to be the son of God. And then he uh, predestinated, he called. And then he called, he justified. And then he justified, he glorified. And what Paul says here is, if God did all of this through somebody he loved the most, for somebody that did not know he loved them. How can you, now that you know him, act like things are going against who you are? I wish I had a church I could preach to. You are complaining that the God that saved you is not able to do what he said he's going to do. So when he gets now to the closing of it, he begins saying, who shall separate us? In other words, there comes a time where I'm able to identify things going on in my life that don't want me to stick. Don't want me to stick with God. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, this church don't stay with God. It's quiet in here. You ain't talking. If you in this church, you ought to have your mouth open. Tell the neighbor, this church don't stay with God. We ain't going to the right nor the left. We're not going front or back. We're only going up. I got to find a church that's ready. Can I tell you? And I'm just about to my closing. Can I tell you? that God told me it is impossible to support me. I got to find somebody I can preach to. You want to remain loyal to a God that doesn't need loyalty but trust. I don't need support because I didn't need nobody to tell me how to start this planet. How to set the universe and the galaxy. I didn't need nobody to tell me how to call and not until Genesis 4 did I call it day to find somebody I can talk to. I don't need support. I created a planet before I created who needed it. Y'all still ain't ready. You can't be loyal to me. You can't be loyal to me. Because you ain't got what it takes to support me. It is here now we really begin to understand what the problem is in Romans chapter 8. He opens up again telling us we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. 
and he has two separations and they and are called according to his purpose. In other words, it's not enough to be loyal, but you've got to be called into a sharing position where God not only gives, but he receives back what he gave and yet still we will not give God complete trust we come up with complaints of why we can't trust God completely I look at my bills Lord I got to make a move along with your move because I don't trust you completely to take care of me I got to handle some things my own way Cause I can't trust the complete way of kingdom Y'all just ain't gonna push me but I'm coming for you uh -huh. But it is here now we begin to understand Why Paul asked the question who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The problem is not God loving you faithfully and consistently. The problem is can you love them back the same way all the time? Lord have mercy. Is not can God heal where I'm broken? The question is, can God trust you to keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing while everything in you is broken? Nobody wants to give me an answer. I said, God wants to know in here. Can I trust you to do us right? Even while you're broken, even while tears are in your eyes, even while money is acting funny, even while the family is falling apart, I'm still loving on you, but you done got broken some way, and now the trust between me and you is starting to get into the church, it's starting to get into your operation, it's starting to get into your prayer, it's starting to get into your worship, to get into your praise. You ain't even coming out the altar. You don't even care what time you get to church. You don't even care if you're praying at all. You won't even pick up the Bible. Another neighbor and say, neighbor, we got to get the church back into the trust fund. Another neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're still in a low place, you better get connected to the church because the church is connected to the head. And the only reason you're still broken is because you're not in the church. But if you get in the church, Y'all ready to sleep? He said, This year, I want to know can I trust this church? Lord, have mercy. I said, God said, This year, I want to know can I trust the church? This one right here, can I trust you to pray and to be fervent and effectual and righteous in your prayer? I said, Can I trust you to pray? Can I trust you to be effectual? Can I trust you to be fervent in your prayer? Can I trust you to pray righteously? Not self-righteously. Can I trust you? Can I trust you to pray always? We in the house y'all still ain't ready. Now your neighbor in here. And say, neighbor, there ought to be a Say, neighbor, I pray for you. You pray for me. Watch God change. Y'all still too low. I ain't stunned, y'all. I said, value another praiser. Let us 
speak over your life and I pray for you. Come and pray. Is there anybody? 